There's been a bunch of announcements already. If you've been watching the keynotes, SAP has got a lot of attention from us. Um, we, uh, without going into all the detail, frankly, I am actually doing a speech tomorrow afternoon talking about where we are technology-wise and platform-wise with SAP. So come to that one, bring your friends. Um, but so without going into all that detail, all I'll say is, is we've come a long way in 12 months. Um, so nine months ago at, at uh, Next San Francisco last year, we launched the four terabyte servers and um, with the promise that we'd have the 12 terabytes um, this year and then the 18 terabytes. Obviously, we announced yesterday we've made the 12 terabytes available to early access customers. Um, that's just a huge move forward. It's the only 12 terabyte VMs in market, the largest VMs in market. Um, we really are setting the pace for the industry at this point. And then from a customer perspective, I have to tell you that my objective here was not just to go out and randomly take anyone. My objective was, look, um, I've been in this market a long time. What happens generally for SCB customers is they come uh, to you and say, well, I know you have a customer that's like me, but I'm bigger than them. And so are you really, can you handle me, right? And so that was one of our challenges as we came into market was the, how do you, how do you, convince this market that we're serious about SAP and that we can handle everybody without this taking five years for us to build. And so objective number one for me was, let's not just go find anyone, let's take the largest customers that we can find and let's convince them that A, Google Cloud is serious and B, we can run their SAP environments. And we did that, as you're about to see, we've rolled out a bunch of names already, more to come. Um, over time, but uh, we got some of the largest uh, customers on the planet, two of which are represented here today. And that would be the second part, which is the extended part of the strategy, frankly, is that, that I thoroughly believe that SAP customers don't actually um, buy from salespeople, that SAP customers are a giant club and they buy from each other, right? One of them does something, and if it's successful, they tell all their friends and all their friends choose to do it too. And so objective number one was find the largest customers on the planet and convince them to come to Google Cloud. Objective number two was let them tell their stories. And so that's today's subject is let's uh, bring two customers up on stage to um, tell their story of what they're doing with SAP and Google Cloud so you can uh, learn from them and, uh, and hear, it from, you know, hear it from the customer's mouth instead of from our mouth. So with that, I'd like to welcome on stage Mina Kishanchandani. I got it right this time. I got it right both times, apparently. Mina, who is uh, with McKesson Technology, and Timo Saltsider from uh, Metronome, or Metro Group. That's okay, you doing okay? Cool. Yeah, no, I had a little bit of a fall last night, so, so I need some more time to walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you could hold the mic. Yeah, Mina, I, I got, a, I got a, a, an email last night from Mina that said I fell in the, uh, I, I fell last night trying to get into the lift and I might not make it there. I'm like, ooh, that doesn't sound good. So I honestly appreciate you, uh, appreciate you making the effort. I will also qualify, by the way, that Mina said I hadn't drunk any alcohol at the time. There was no <laughs> need to qualify, but she did qualify when she arrived today. Exactly, because I thought that's the natural question <laughs> that comes to mind. I, I, I assumed nothing. <laughs> I, I, I only had concern when I got the email. But anyway, there you go. So. Um, Really quickly, first of all, both of you, thank you for giving us your time today. You've actually both been very generous with your time, um, both here and previously. Um, and like I said, it's one of, the, one of the great things for me about SAP is it is a giant community where, where the customers all do work with each other. Equally, Google is very good at that community and you've both given time um, gracefully and, and gratefully um, uh, already. So really do appreciate what you do for us. Um, that said, uh, generally, I will say that, that in any SAP project, technology is part of it. And we're Google Cloud, we like to talk about technology. Um, but a lot of this is about people, right? And it's about people leading and it's about people um, as a group changing. So I think people become important. So instead of just piling into technology, can we get a little background from you on, you know, what's your career history? How do you get here? What's your current role? What are you doing? So we get a sense of you. Sure. So I uh, have been with McKesson for about uh, a dozen years now. And prior to that, I was uh, based out of Midwest working for a utility company as a database architect. Um, so that's, that's what my background is. Um, and then when I joined McKesson, I joined as a database architect and SAP technology team, essentially a basis team. Um, 
and not having any background in SAP whatsoever. In fact, the first day I joined McKesson, I looked around and I just said, ask people what's SAP basis, you know? So, so that's where I started <laughs> in SAP. Uh, but very quickly within, uh, uh, you know, within uh, a year, I kind of crossed over to the SAP area and uh, kind of grew through that, uh, for, uh, in that technology space and then um, over time, I've had a lot of opportunities at McKesson, and then I've led the SAP technology teams there. And most, and then along the way, I've also took over um, actually some data analytics uh, responsibilities and stood up uh, a service within McKesson on-prem. Um, started, we started some cloud expansion work on that front as well, and that 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 continues to go on. Uh, very recently, I've uh, transitioned everything I previously had, and, and now my role is just purely to focus on our ERP transformation in North America, and also to support our European um, ER ERP journey as well. Uh, they've already started on S4, but, uh, so, but primarily that's going to be my focus going forward. So no pressure, you're only responsible for the entire operating environment of McKesson for the future. Uh, uh, well, if you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's true, but anyway. Oh, you're responsible for delivering it anyway. Uh, yeah, so, no, it's, it's, it's a team. It's a very, very large and talented, uh, not large, I should say. It's a very, very talented team. Uh, it's not as large as it needs to be, <laughs> but, uh, but no, it is, it, it's, it's all the team. Thanks, and Timo. Yeah, um, I'm the Chief Solution Officer at Metro, and I actually like that title quite a lot because uh, a second title is Chief Information Officer, so CEO of the organization, uh, but Chief Solution Officer uh, represents a bit more what I'm doing because I'm not only in charge of IT, but also on product and user experience, so that means I run the entire product organization within Metro. Uh, we are pretty large uh, within my organization, so 2,500 people uh, purely in IT and UX, etc. And uh, I'm in this role now since... Uh, almost two years, so I'm pretty new. Uh, before that, I was basically only in the digital space, so building a lot of tools and, and products are probably not known here in the US, but for example, Xing, that's the European version of LinkedIn, so I was there uh, also on the supervisory board, so a lot of digital background. Uh, studied actually computer science here around the corner in Berkeley, so I feel a bit home, oh, yeah. uh, just a bit actually, and uh, yeah, doing this, as I said, for two years now, and we're in the middle of the digital transformation, and I think that's the reason why Metro approached me and asked whether I would like to, to work for this organization because uh, one of my tasks is obviously to drive and we'll talk I think in a minute about Metro itself yep. um, but uh, SAP I mean we are a German based company and as German company you have to have summer SAP so therefore we're using SAP mainly in the financial sector uh, there are some uh, changes without uh, pulling too much into the sales direction because I have the feeling that uh, some SAP salespeople are chasing me around the globe um, because it might be that we also introduce SAP retail in the near future because so far we have a custom developed solution running our merchandising environment. Uh, but yeah, we are an SAP shop when it comes to finance and uh, I think that's the reason why I'm sitting here. Yeah, I mean, and, and just I think really the next question is just to set the scale, because I think Metro is, uh, Metro is effectively an uh, um, everywhere in the world except US brand, in fact, uh, if you were chasing it through right now. Um, giant retail, I think you guys were number two, uh, you, yeah, we just split into two companies, right? But before that, you're actually the number two retailer in Europe. Yep. So can you just want to give the, the audience just a perspective on who Metro is and, and the scale you operate at? Okay, don't want to go too back in the history because, I mean, we are a 60, 70 years old company, uh, had a really a huge footprint. Uh, we decided now to focus very, very strong. So the focus is now really on our core business, which is wholesale. So that means we are a wholesale company uh, acting in 35 countries around the globe, um, not in the US, as you just mentioned, yeah. uh, but we are very strong in Europe and very strong in Asia. So uh, emerging markets for us are China, uh, India, for example, we are very strong and obviously in our home base in Germany, we are pretty strong, but also in France and Italy and Spain and Russia, etc. So um, 35 countries and uh, it's a pretty big organization. So we have 37 billion revenue currently, Euro, so around 38 billion US dollars. Uh, we have 150,000 people. So, and uh, in also very exotic mar markets like Myanmar or Pakistan, etc. So therefore, it's usually quite hard for me to get into the US because I have this stamp from Pakistan in my, in my passport and it's not, it's not that easy to get into the country. Uh, but uh, yeah, so pretty big organization and Whole Food is our core business and coming obviously from brick and mortar and my responsibility is now to move this into the omnichannel world. So therefore, invest quite heavily currently into online shops and apps and all this kind of stuff. Cool. 
I mean, effectively, you are, to, to, for the US audience uh, in the room, you, the business model for you at this point is effectively you're a Costco, right? You're, you're, um, well, you would argue you've existed a long time before Costco did, but you, the, the equivalent business in the US is... Yeah, so Costco, Cisco, so these are the equivalents here in, in the US. Um, the, the problem we are facing is, as I said, we are in different countries and uh, we are running, unfortunately, not one business model, which would be great from an IT perspective, but in some countries it's more a B2C business, where in other countries it's a classical B2B business, and uh, mainly restaurants, hotels, caterers, these are our classical customers, and as I said, we're running different business models, and that makes it extremely hard, because we have a central IT serving these uh, more than 30 countries with different business models, and that makes it very complex to standardize, And but that's one of the reasons why we focus very much on SAP, because this is standard solution and we want to simplify our process landscape. Thanks. And then Mina uh, McKesson is, uh, again, McKesson is a fascinating company, Fortune 6, sixth largest company in America. And it's amazing the number of people I meet who say, wow, who are McKesson? Right. Exactly. Yeah, so as you mentioned, uh, it's a Fortune 6 company with the uh, revenues of close to, I think, 210 billion. Yep. Uh, and it's been in business for over, I think, uh, 185 years. I don't know exact number by now. Who's counting? But uh, <laughs> so we primarily, uh, you know, deliver uh, basically one third of uh, prescription medicines in North America are delivered by McKesson. Um, then we also have a, a pretty large uh, uh, offering in our brand and private label of uh, medical surgical supplies. Um, then we operate uh, uh, um, in the specialty healthcare space as well, um, supporting oh, upwards of, I think, 9,000 plus uh, oncologists and specialists um, through, throughout our networks. Um, and then we also offer, uh, we also support a, a large number of independently owned and banner pharmacies as well. Uh, we, uh, uh, we are about, from an employee strength perspective, I think we are about 78,000 plus at the moment. And um, we operate across uh, 16 countries right now. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. that's it. I guess, just to give you a perspective on McKesson, I think uh, even inside Google, when we started working with McKesson, a lot of people were like, well, well, who are McKesson? What do you do? Um, just to, because I used to call on McKesson with my SAP badge on back in the days. Um, my, my, the question I always put to people, if you can just imagine this is, so think about your local hospital, your local doctor's office, your local dentist's office. And so understand all the consumables they go through every day, right? In terms of ceiling bags and gloves and needles and everything they need. And then question, if you've never questioned it, wonder why is there not a giant warehouse attached to those hospitals? And the simple answer is there isn't because McKesson is that warehouse. Yeah. I mean, for eight hours a day, pretty much every hospital, doctor's office, dentist's office, whatever, calls McKesson and says, I need these things tomorrow or in the next 40 hours, and it goes out. I mean, and, and this is part of the, what I want to reinforce is not just the scale of these two customers and, and who they are and what we're taking on here, um, but also the, um, the how reliability, and we're crucially aware that reliability and performance are everything, right? If, if, if Metro stops working, there's a lot of restaurants that just stop working. There's a lot of people, frankly, that don't eat uh, because of it. If McKesson stops working, um, operations get canceled. We have huge issues. I mean, hospitals don't keep the supplies in stock. They look at their schedule and they order to your operation having been scheduled, right? So um, when people come back and go, well, is the cloud ready? This isn't just, hey, it's a little site accounting system. We're talking serious economic impact and, and challenge if we don't do it right, right? This is a huge step forward. Absolutely. What comes to mind is, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we had a, a leadership conference here and our CEO kind of gave us, uh, came to, you know, talk to us and somebody asked him, um, uh, what's, what are your top most priorities that IT can be working on? And he kind of just looked point blank at us. He's like, don't break anything and don't let anyone steal anything. So that's our expectation of Google as well. That's the ba you know table stakes for us, uh, yeah. Because those operations uh, excellence is a huge, uh, you know, part of our cultures, and uh, that's very very important to us. Yeah, don't steal anything was in reference to data. Yes, because you also have a huge amount of data on Absolutely. people and their medical yeah. conditions yeah. and everything else. Yeah, no pressure, no pressure on me. But anyway, um, so thanks for that. Equally, the other thing I think is fascinating here is two industries, healthcare and retail, where you know. 
these are not industries you go to to retire in, effectively, right? These are, not, these are industries that are in massive change globally. And, that, and I think that leads us into the conversation too, which is, um, uh, you know, this time last year, a lot of the conversation I got was lift and shift, lift and shift, right? We just need to lift and shift what we have and, and move it into the cloud. And I think in both of your cases, there is no lift and shift here, right? The, the, um, we're talking massive projects, and along the way, your business and your industry is changing rapidly, and so you have to deal with that change as well. Do you want to just quickly highlight the, the, the you know, what keeps you awake at night in that context? Yeah, obviously, I mean, healthcare is such a rapidly changing, uh, you know, at, at such a uh, rapid scale. Uh, you know, it's becoming increasingly high tech and very savvy, uh, you know, tech savvy. Also, our consumers are demanding more. They have a lot more power. Um, and then we have a large set of aging population across the globe, and then, and then um, you have these government agencies and uh, regulators constantly, constantly changing the rules and policies on us. So you have to be able to, uh, you know, quickly adapt and to those changes and quickly deliver uh, those those to those requirements. To, uh, so IT has a, can have a pretty large, impactful role to enable our, our business to, to be able to meet those demands. Uh, so yeah, so the change is constant and that's what we are seeing continuously and uh, uh, that's where we need to focus on uh, you know, modernizing our architectures to be able to meet the needs of the business demands. Yeah. And Timo, retail is, uh, yeah, retail is an easy life these days, right? Not much change going on? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, uh, in fact, uh, we are facing huge issues in front of us. So I think in the past it was uh, quite easy. I mean, you, you just sold your stuff and uh, you're, you're all set. Uh, these days, uh, things are changing radically. So um, if you look, front, particularly in our markets, if you look into Asia, I mean, uh, I think a lot of innovation out of retail is coming in the meantime out of China. So uh, for example, the usage of mobile devices in China is completely different than in Europe and I also believe here in the US. So it's pretty normal that I know an 80 year old woman gets to a store and she is having her mobile phone and paying with a mobile phone and scanning products, etc. So that's pretty normal. So the, the speed of innovation uh, pushed out of these markets so, and competitors like Alibaba, so long term competitors or Amazon, I mean, they're, they're pushing hard into that direction. They bring a lot of innovation to that space. And uh, for us, uh, we, we really try to be an omni channel player. So therefore, we have this uh, brick and mortar business with huge stores around the globe. And uh, what we need to do is obviously drive our customers a bit more into this uh, omnichannel world and this makes it quite difficult. Uh, also coming also from a more B2C background, I just figured out that uh, obviously uh, the customer behavior is completely different in our world. So it's not that uh, customers are searching for a product. If a restaurant owner gets into a, our stores, he or she knows exactly what they're looking for. So therefore completely different customer behavior. They don't want to spend too much time in a store. So they want to obviously get in and get out as fast as possible with the best prices and the best customer experience. Uh, so therefore optimizing, for example, the checkout process at the cashier is one of the topics we have. Uh, we bring a lot of technology currently in, so a lot of also AI technology like vision APIs, etc., just to, de to detect products. Also running a lot of innovation when it comes to augmented reality, so you take your mobile phone, put it on a product, and then you get some additional information on the product. So this kind of topics are brand new to our world, and uh, obviously this is a huge uh, change within our internal processes and also on the mindset. So when it comes to agility and, uh, I don't know, self organized teams, etc. These are the topics and we, as I said, we're a pretty old organization and if you want to transform the organization into a, well, very fast, high-speed organization, this is also one of the challenges that keeps yeah. in the wake. Cool, we'll come back to that one in a second. So, I wasn't joking at the start where I said, you know, the answer is, for, for me, the answer was let's get the biggest customers we can and let's prove we can do this. Um, both of you represent on the stage, just quickly flip it to SCP. Do you want to just kind of give people a sense on statistically where you were at with your SCP installations? So uh, we are running uh, not only one SAP installations, we're running multiple. As I said, we have this decentralized um, environment. So uh, what we're doing currently with SAP and in context on, on Google Cloud is that we are consolidating more than 100 different accounting systems. So, and uh, you just heard that I'm saying we have 25 or 30 countries. And you might ask yourself, OK, 25 or 30 countries, why you run 100 different accounting systems? So consolidation of these systems is uh, quite hard for us. And we expect that this uh, project will take three to five years to consolidate all these systems. If you look 
in the cost center infrastructure, so the numbers of cost centers we have across the globe are, are more than 10,000. So to consolidate them into a couple of hundred is already a big challenge. So uh, this is where we are, and we, we started this whole journey um, about 12 months ago, where we said, okay, let's let's uh, look how we how the future of our SAP installation will be, and we have the general strategy to move towards cloud. So we're doing this obviously not only in the SAP world, but also in, in our digital initiatives when it comes to online sales, etc. But uh, now we are in the middle of, of that journey, and uh, it's pretty clear that we're moving into SAP S4 HANA on cloud on Google Cloud, and this is uh, where we are right now. And uh, yeah, project just started about a couple of months ago. We're still in a conceptual phase, and currently uh, very close to bring the first country live, and then obviously continue with rolling out the solution to all of the rest of the countries. Yeah, I mean it's a huge project. I, it's funny when we published a, an article about you. And the number of phone calls I got from SAP people and customers who came back and said, wait, that, that art is, it has to be a typo. That article says there are more than 100 individual SAP systems, because historically it was completely decentralized, and they're consolidating it to one. And, and but for the record, there's only two customers I know of globally that are doing this. You're one of them. There's, a, there's another one that's not public is doing this. But I mean, it's, it is a, uh, it, it, you mean, with all the stuff we just talked about, about changing your industry, um, the complexity that's involved in doing all of those changes and bringing them all together, and inevitably, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but, but my perspective on, on your project, like for a lot of people, um, you start this project with a destination, it's unlikely to be the actual destination you end up at, right? Because the world's gonna change in the meantime, and so a lot of what hopefully we're doing for you, a lot of what you need is the flexibility, right? It's the, it's the, it's the understanding that, that there is no set destination and, and the ability to change rapidly at all layers in the stack is what's going to get you where you need to get to. Is that fair? Yeah. So uh, scalability, flexibility. So these are the keywords for us. Obviously, we're also interested that nobody's stealing stuff from us. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, frankly, this is a core requirement on our side. So uh, we really want to do much more. And uh, therefore, Google is first not only a strategic partner when it comes to our finance SAP world. It's also an overall strategic partner. So we long term, uh, we plan to move basically everything into the cloud. So that's a clear strategy here. And uh, therefore, there's a high demand also when it comes to cultural aspects, collaboration, innovation, these kind of topics with SAP and, and Google. And therefore, we're pushing hard on these topics. But uh, you're right, it's a very complex process. Uh, this will take, as I said, a couple of years to finalize that one. And uh, the biggest challenge is not only technology, also convince the people that this is the right way to go. So I have a lot of CFOs sitting in the countries telling me that this is a pretty stupid idea, that they want to sit on their existing processes and infrastructure. And uh, therefore, we need to convince also these kind of people, making sure that everybody's following the same path. But standardization and harmonization and simplification of the processes, this is a clear target of Metro. Uh, Mina. You want to run the statistics package on on Mc SAP or McKesson? Do I? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's uh, you know it's considered as uh, um, I think well, amongst the top three or five or something like that. So it's a pretty large uh, install base that we have of uh, SAP across uh, Europe and North America. Um, we probably close to I want to say. Um, maybe 30 plus products that uh, you know that are either deployed or on their way to be deployed, um, and, uh, and uh, probably close to uh, upwards of 260 SAP instances that we have, and I'm sure every day the number changes. And one of our largest uh, 260 just to, production systems. Uh, no, or no, sorry, not production, but non -production. Yeah, okay, yeah. Got it. Um, but I, I, you know, I'll talk about why the non-production is also important because. Okay. Uh, uh, in North America, one of our uh, ECC instances, it's upwards of 100 terabytes. And when you think about the entire landscape, and most of them, except for development, is a copy of production. So you're talking like big scale. And if you're talking about cloud, I mean, that's just not going to, you know, that's just impossible to, you know, move, lift, and shift. Um, and uh, also, th that system currently, you know, supports uh, transaction volumes close to, if I ta think about peak lines, it's close to, I want to say, two, um, you know, close to two million uh, line items a day. Um, and, um, and that, to most of the processing is done within the four to six hour peak, peak time. Uh, and then availability, I think, you know, it's a, almost like a 24 by 7 requirement, which we don't, we are not, we are not achieving that, but because we do have some maintenance windows on the weekend, a very short one, which now the business, we are getting a lot of pressure to eliminate that. So we will be looking to Google <laughs> to, <laughs> to help us with that. Um, and then we also have very, very large HANA shop. Um, we've had HANA um, um, deployed in our environment uh, for, I think, since 2014. 
It's uh, probably one of the largest BW and HANA system that we have. It's uh, 24 terabytes. Um, and a bunch of other uh, HANA systems, and we also, uh, transactional systems, I should say. Um, there's a suite on HANA. So I, uh, the point being that you know, we do have uh, a good amount of talent in HANA skills. Um, and then as we look at our S4 journey, uh, right now, where that's that started, that's in uh, in our UK uh, for the UK implementation. Uh, that's a completely greenfield um, net new implementation. So that's starting on GCP. Um, right now. has already started on GCP. Uh, when it comes to North America, I think uh, uh, you know we have to kind of see. Uh, get uh, the, get the experience with getting a UK environment on GCP and learn from that, and then take those learnings and bring them back and you know plan our journey here. Um, yeah, so that, that's where we are just mostly in North America, mostly forming norming stage. Uh, UK, we've started. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating because for both of you, the ultimate destination is the same, which is effectively in your case one giant S4 system, in your case probably two, one for Europe and one for America. But the 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 two journeys are just radically different. Right, the, and fascinating as it goes. So um, I think one of the things, I mean, obviously there's a bunch of people in the audience who ultimately are either on the same journey you're on or are considering the same journey you're on. So I think that's a little bit of this, which is the, just a couple of specific questions, but one of them is how do you actually set about evaluating? How do you, at the point where it comes to the, okay, we've got to pick a cloud provider, how did you set about evaluating Google Cloud specifically, doubtless others as well. Um, how do you set that decision criteria? How do you get that process together? What have you learned from that? Yeah, I think there's a lot of factors that went into that. We have been on a cloud journey for a while, actually, with the, you know, some other uh, providers. But um, essentially, it all came down to what Google brought to the table. There, so you may have heard our CTO talk at, in the keynote this morning, uh, the software engineering mindset and uh, a mindset of uh, Hey, uh, challenge! Uh, ch uh, you know, uh, challenging us to actually think differently because previously we were all thinking lift and shift and you know, optimize uh, total cost of ownership optimization and all of that, and we were really not moving the dial forward. So with Google coming in and challenging us on that front and uh, you know showing that partnership, and then the other side is. Um, you know, SAP, the scale that I just talked about, I mean, McKesson, everything else around it will move if SAP moves, yeah. you know? So th to be able to, uh, because, th so that became a, a one of a pr a big use cases for the evaluation. Uh, so last year we did a POC and with, with Google, um, and uh, we were able to kind of, within a four to six weeks time frame, able to actually set up SAP system soup to nuts and test a lot of our operational capabilities there. So that became actually, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that became also one of the major inputs back into the decision-making process. I'm sure there's a lot more that went into it, uh, but I will say that this was a pretty big use case. I think it's interesting. I mean, if I net it out, fundamentally the feedback from McKesson at the end of it is you guys entered this in the, with the question, do you have the boxes? And, and we exited with the question of do you have the processes, right? right? And, and that's different. So, Timo, do you have a? Yeah, uh, we're coming from a different journey. So um, we we pushing very hard, as I said, this omnichannel journey. So we started about two years ago, or actually three years ago, uh, this way just to move into the delivery business. So food delivery business is extremely relevant for us. Uh, we're growing two digit percent every year now since then. So we are currently generating more than six billion already out of the delivery business. So quite strong growth over the last two, three years. And uh, scalability is a clear issue for us. So uh, for example, if you are active in a country like India and you push the wrong button and you send out a campaign to, I don't know, 20, 30 million people, then obviously you have a scalability question to solve. Yeah. So and uh, therefore, we, it was pretty clear that this cannot be done with our existing own data centers. So we decided, OK, let's move into the cloud space. We're looking into that area. And it just uh, as you mentioned, uh, the engineering perspective is extremely relevant for us. And obviously, it's, I think it's pretty clear just looking into this event here. I mean, the engineers, they simply love Google. So therefore, and that was uh, our 
already kind of a commitment from the engineering perspective, but cost played a role also um, how are we treated when it comes, for example, to the negotiations, uh, etc. So, because uh, this is, ex at least for me personally, extremely relevant, so the, uh, Google did a pretty good job. And therefore, we made this decision about two years ago to move our digital products into Google Cloud, mainly due to scalability and also global scale, although, uh, just to, to be very frank, uh, we have some issues here, obviously, with China and with Russia, so because uh, Google is not present in these countries at this point, at least, so we hope that something is moving there, hopefully soon, but um, so the announcement yesterday with Anthos helps us a lot, because uh, if, uh, for example, I don't know, we could partner with a public cloud provider in China, and then there's uh, a nice link using Anthos uh, into, into that cloud environment, helps obviously our operations, so therefore, this was the starting point, and then uh, when the migration of SAP R3 to SAP S4 HANA came up, um, we obviously asked the question again, would it make sense now to move into multi or hybrid cloud environment, or say on-premise, or, or bring in even a second uh, public cloud provider, but we made the decision, okay, to, to stick with Google, so therefore we made the decision also to move uh, there and obviously had some discussions with Google and uh, we produced at the beginning a couple of proof of concepts and our people were pretty happy about that, actually very surprising because initially from our internal people there was more uh, kind of a pushback when, it's, when we said, okay, uh, we moved to public cloud also on the SAP space now, so because the feedback was, okay, now we want to have our own boxes and everything under control, uh, but uh, we, as I said, we started a couple of proof of concepts uh, they were extremely easy, and uh, so uh, the initial proof of contact initially was planned to do it in two to three uh, months, and we did it, uh, I don't know, in one or two weeks, So, and that convinced obviously also our tech people and the SAP guys, and therefore the decision was pretty clear. Yeah, I think we met at oh, Sapphire last year, so that was June, that was May last year, and we said, hey, you know, we think we can do this, and I remember the time, we are like, okay, let's give it a go, and, and yeah, I mean, 16 weeks later, we concluded it all out, and we're proceeding forward, so it's, I mean, that's lightning speed in SAP world, but anyway, I mean, and, and so in full disclosure, I mean, these are massive projects, right, they're gonna go on for years, so we're, just give us a sense on, on you know, so in your case, you've been running now for like six months, you've been running for six weeks, basically, uh, effectively, since we, we've put the first boxes to use, I mean, just wanna give us an update on, on where you are and what you've learned yeah. so far. Yeah, as I said, the, the technology actually is not the problem. It's, it's more to consolidate and harmonize the different process a, across the different countries. So we spend quite a lot of time in convincing people and come to a standard approach because obviously you have a couple of CFOs from the countries uh, want to have a different setup of the SAP environment. So therefore a lot of uh, conceptual work convincing these guys that it makes sense to go into one standard approach, which obviously huge implications on the processes in the individual countries. Uh, but uh, there we are and uh, we're in the middle of the implementation right now. Uh, we're doing, and this is Historically, within Metro, we're doing a lot of the stuff ourselves. So we're building up now huge resources in India uh, to, uh, well, customize and implement uh, SAP S4 HANA. So and uh, this is ongoing, and we're hiring every couple of days a couple of people and uh, just make sure that we have a good SAP practice in-house and uh, using not too many partners uh, to do this, but obviously get a lot of support from SAP directly and also obviously from Google. Yep. Mina? So I think, as you mentioned, our journey uh, is very recent. Uh, in terms of actually process, I think we have good you know, uh, alignment from the standardization and harmonization perspective. But that's not happened overnight either. So that's been a long journey. Yeah, <laughs> you, your journey yeah. started way before. Way you before. To us. Yeah, yeah, way, way before. Actually, it started, I think, like three or four years ago in Europe. Uh, so where they started the implementation of ECC for, that was the intent that, you know, and that started in Norway, and that just completed, I think, sometime mid of last year. Um, and then it was paused, and then, uh, you know, the pivot to S4 over there. So from a process perspective, I think, you know, we were good when we started our technical kind of evaluation for where it's going to be deployed. Um, so, yeah, so it is very recent. Uh, so far, I think, uh, the, the the speed uh, at which we've been able to deploy the, even the uh, development environments they are not sandbox they are actually development environments um, you know the uh, timeline was very aggressive that was given to us considering that we did a POC with Google, Google completed concluded that only last November and uh, we were told that the, all the entire development st uh, stack and systems have to be built by May. So, so that was a pretty tall order. Uh, but so far, I think with the partnership with Google, uh, all the, uh, the engineering teams that have been brought in to work with our internal teams to enable the platform, 
and uh, get our deployments going. I think that's been an amazing experience for us. And the ability, um, you know, to, to actually upskill some of the teams that uh, have been working, uh, you know, th that's going to be actually. So the independence, the self-reliance aspect of it is also very important. So that's been also uh, um, sort of achieved uh, in a short, uh, you know, in, in the, the short duration. So overall, I would say so far, so good. Um, time will tell. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Timo a question and come back to that point you just made. But Timo, I've heard you say this a couple of times. I think it's fascinating for the audience, which is the, the part of this for you isn't just, again, the technology change, technology change, but it's actually changing the culture at Metro. And the partnering with Google was as much about changing the culture as it was the technology. Do you want to kind of explain that? Sure. So um, like most others probably also in the room, we, we have this war for talent. So we're really looking actively for a lot of, of people. And uh, we started our digital journey with uh, so a lot of externals helping us to, to build up these platforms. And we're now in the middle of internalization that. And um, you know, if you have people in your organization that are working for Metro since, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years, it's, it's, and, and we really have people working more than 40 years for us, which is already a bit strange to me at least, uh, but um, you, you, you talk to these people and obviously uh, you see that uh, they are kind of, well, fixed on a specific mindset and uh, to change this, it's obviously good to have an impact also from the outside world, so we get this push a bit also from, from people like Google, so therefore we're sending people to the Google offices, we try to uh, do workshops together, we run a couple of innovation labs currently with Google, so therefore this helps us a lot in at least driving that space uh, a bit into that, into that uh, innovation direction, but when it comes to culture, it's a bit even more so. Uh, we even did a rebranding of our IT subsidiary, so it was formerly called Metro Systems, which is obviously not that sexy, now called Metronom, and we uh, combine a couple of uh, organizations into that organization, and you know, if you if you walk across our, our campus at headquarters, you see a lot of people wearing Metronom hoodies and, and t-shirts, etc., and that was two or three years ago impossible, and therefore we're pushing very, very hard on, on brand experience, so we want to be just a good employer brand, and we are very aggressive on that topic. I do a lot of internal service with our people, People, and actually we do this on a monthly basis or so not on an annual survey basis uh, just to figure out how, how well we're treating the people and uh, we're investing quite a lot and uh, in terms of that obviously a, a partner like Google helps us a lot because I mean I think Google is known for having an exceptional culture and we, we don't want to copy uh, the Google culture I think that's impossible with our setup but at least uh, there are some things to learn and also when it comes to hiring processes and all these HR processes uh, we're just looking in what, what Google is doing and there's a very strong relationship and uh, what we're doing now since about a year is we're introducing objectives and key results, OKRs, uh, which is uh, pretty famous at, at Google. And I think uh, if you talk to uh, the founders of Google, they, they at least tell you that uh, OKRs was one of the, the, the key principles at Google to, to drive this organization. So there's a lot of exchange and we're learning a lot from Google. And therefore, it, it's more about um, yeah, exchanging culture, exchanging processes, rather than only having a technology collaboration. Yeah, I think one of the things you said was that, that basically every time the Google guys are sitting in the audience, but every time the Google guys uh, came to visit Metro and during the sales process, they were always wearing Google t-shirts. It's just one of the things that really resonated for Metro is that, that they were very proud of their brand and they, and they wanted to display it. And then your own people started to replicate that. And, and it's just a, it's a really interesting conversation because um, we're having this yesterday. I mean, anything you do with SCP is hopefully a long-term marriage, right? Um, multiple ways, there's partners, there's SCP, there's us, there's everything involved. So on the one hand, it's a long-term marriage. On the other hand, I mean, ultimately, you want us to be electricity service, right? I mean, ultimately, you want us, you want to go to SAP and turn it on and it works and it updates and it does everything. And, and so it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a challenge, frankly, for me as we look at the business growing out, which is what do you really want from us? Because on the one hand, what you want is stability and effectively never to have to talk to us because it, the stuff just runs. On the other hand, we do have to maintain contact and we do have to grow together. And so if you have a concept, I'm interested, right? But it's a, it's a long-term challenge for me, which is um, what is it you actually, after the sale is done, right? What is it you actually want from us in a long-term relationship to make SCP successful in the long term? I think you, you just nailed it because uh, we, we consider at least in that context, I mean, when I'm talking about uh, digital and talking about uh, warehouse management, and I think it's a different topic or supply chain as other examples, but when it, can, when it comes to financial services and financial processes internally, it simply needs to run, it needs to be up and running. So therefore, uh, the example you just brought with electricity or water, that's what we're expecting from you, to making sure that this works 
and uh, that it runs without any hassle and uh, that it provides good scalability, that security is fine so that nobody's stealing stuff from us. Uh, so uh, that's our requirement at this point, but as I said, long term, I could imagine that, we, that we're driving this uh, relationship between Google, SAP, and Metro even to the next level, and then we have a bit of more demand because then it comes into innovation uh, that we are talking about new things that we deploy to the specific countries that we have also on this cultural level some exchange, so this is what we're expecting, but at this point when it comes to the finance applications, uh, it's all about making sure that it works in a proper way and that it runs smooth for our customers, and I'm talking about internal customers, so therefore I simply don't want to get any stress with the CFOs in the countries, I just want to hear from them in, I don't know, one or two or three years when we're done with that process, and that it works smooth and that they ha don't have any problems at all, because uh, it's uh, good as a CIO that if you hear nothing, then it's perfect, and that's what I would like to achieve. <laughs> And Mina, I think you equally, I mean, we're at the, the start of the journey with McKesson, but obviously you and me were in Stuttgart five weeks ago, and, and we started this process where we basically, the, the, the route track for you is, we did a hackathon basically, where we had our team and your team together. It was fascinating, I mean, literally, I think three hours into the hackathon, uh, my team was elbowed out of the way and your guys took over. It was an yeah. amazing process, but again, is that, how are you going to build that, I guess, internally at McKesson to get the transitional change to happen? And um, how do you think the long term works? Yeah, I think essentially that was the start of it. Um, you know, the hackathon that you, uh, you, you talked about. Just to get that, you know, base excited, um, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing to watch when they actually get to do this themselves. Uh, literally, after, even after that week, I think uh, there's so much of uh, feedback I've gotten from that team that they felt so empowered just ha going through that process and being able to actually, you know, SAP, I know so it can be pretty, you know, mundane in terms of, um, you know, technology and all of that. It's, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty um, you know, it has a long history, but, uh, but just to be able to use the cloud capabilities, to be able to build some level of automation that we built even that week, and we continue to kind of hone on uh, more and more. Uh, I think that is exciting uh, people there. And also on top of that now, our go forward strategy is uh, let SAP do what it's best for, um, and then anything else, uh, you know, anything, um, uh, you know, differentiating capabilities that you want to build uh, to, for your competitive advantage in the market, take it out, uh, don't build there. And so that is also going to give the teams an opportunity to actually learn new, new skills. And they may not become developers overnight and use the, uh, but, but there is definitely a desire there when you start to paint that picture. You know? So you have to give them those opportunities to be able to cross skill as well. And that's what we are focused on uh, as well. You know, there are, a lot of um, you know, teams that do that type of work, so we are trying to see where there is interest within the existing teams and help them get plugged into those uh, groups and, and get some experience uh, working on some of those projects. Um, the other thing is um, what we've been doing also, like a, almost like a shark tank kind of uh, concept, where uh, we've been pitching, letting pe people pitch some ideas about what they want to do uh, on the cloud platform. And, uh, you know, kind of, of course, it has to have some eventual, uh, you know, some uh, value that we are going to eventually de deliver. But those are the ideas we are uh, getting from people and uh, from the teams. And then we are picking a couple to invest and let them work on it. So, I mean, all of this, in, you know, is really helping kind of build that excitement and obviously, you know, and then it attracts other talent, uh, external talent as well. And uh, so, yeah, so there's a lot of things uh, we are trying to do in that uh, to, to energize the, the teams there. Very cool. So I guess two final questions, one of which is incredibly dangerous um, because the, the, A, there's a camera in the back of the room recording this, and B, uh, I'm going to ask the question that, that the general rules say never ask this question. But the, uh, what, for me personally, one of my personal things always is when I get feedback, it's like, yeah, I, I like the nice things. Tell me what we need to do better, right? It's all about improvement. And honestly, one of my team actually recently asked me how they were doing. I was like, you're doing great. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about what I need to do better. I'm like, okay, like that attitude. In that spirit, what do you need us to do better? What can we, what can we do more for you as we go forward here? So I think, uh, so, um, well, our journey is recent. So I think we'll 
you know, will continue to, to discover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, our goal is really uh, to learn from your teams and then uh, get get complete, uh, not if not completely, but uh, fair, uh, you know, have a fair amount of self-independence. So we want, you know, Google to take that approach with us as well. Focus more on, you know, how we can learn um, and, uh, you know, so that's one thing. Uh, and then continue to, um, you know, challenge our mindset. Continue to do that because sometimes we can be fixated in, you know, some things. And so continue to do that. And, uh, you know, that's been a very, um, uh, for me, that's been something I've seen and I hope to continue to see. Yeah, one of the feedbacks we've heard loud and hard from customers is we need to start doing customer panels and customer get-togethers and start sharing and, and you know, driving that community and knowledge better. It's clearly one of the things we have to do. I got it. Timo, I'm sure you have feedback. Yeah. Um, and you get the chance to speak it out loud. So. Yeah, sure. So um, <laughs> I could repeat a couple of things that you just mentioned, but uh, one topic uh, we would like to see a bit more is uh, more business talk. So because, I mean, uh, at the end, Google is a very engineering-driven organization, which is fine. And actually, our engineers love the way Google is doing business. But uh, now from a top management perspective, it would be just nice to, to get a bit more support and a bit more insights when it comes to, to business-related functions. Yeah. So therefore, uh, we highly appreciate what just has been communicated in the in the, the meetings, the keynote meetings uh, yesterday and today, that uh, these industry-specific solutions that are, will be developed by Google and by, by partners. So this is something we're really looking forward to. So because, as I said, our business is not a classical retail business, so we're really looking for uh, to get more innovation into our organization, et cetera. And, and therefore, we're expecting that from a strategic partner like Google and SAP, that we're getting a bit more feedback and a bit more consultancy when it comes to business-specific questions we, we might have. And also, what you just mentioned, customer panels, et cetera, to exchange with, with other peers would be very helpful, uh, but uh, while well, building industry-specific solutions for the retail industry that fit also our specific needs, uh, that would be just perfect. So, because so far, excellent technology, no question about that. And uh, I, as uh, also a computer science guy, uh, appreciate that in keynotes there are some Unix shells and you see some commands typed in. But obviously, I would like to see a bit more more business talk in the future, and that's our requirement. Cool. And so, clock is running down. Last question. The um, you're on a journey. There's a lot of people sitting in the audience who are probably thinking, yeah, I'm going to have to do the same thing. There's some, of, there's some people in this audience who are thinking, I want to do the same thing. And there's some people in the audience who are thinking, I have to do the same thing whether I want it or not, right? Um, knowing what you know now, what's your best advice to them? Uh, it's actually quite simple. So uh, just make sure that you take the team with you. That would be my major advice. So uh, it was not a top-down decision that we say, okay, let's let's move into the Google Cloud environment. We really asked our people. We got really some buy-in. We built a lot of prototypes. So if you have the buy-in from your team and your organization, then it's actually a fairly easy move. So, but if you do it top-down and say, okay, I mean, I don't know if everybody would be a, a huge Microsoft fan, and then we make the decision towards Google, then this would be a disaster. But in our case, we we simply informed the people up front. We asked for their opinion and just made sure that that we have a lot of proof of concept and uh, just got the buy-in from the team. And if you have that, then it's an easy going. So I mean, we're not through yet. So I'm expecting, obviously, over the next couple of months and years, some issues uh, within the project, which is pretty normal. Uh, but I know that the team is highly motivated. And I know when we first communicated in the SAP space that we're moving towards cloud, we got a huge pushback. But then when the guys saw the technology and could play around with the technology, it was fairly easy for them. And uh, therefore, we have now well transformed basically our SAP guys from on-premise fans into Google fans. And this obviously helps to run such a huge project. Cool. Mina? So I think um, very similar. Um, so that's that's you know for us it had to be a little bit of a top down as well, uh, because I think um, you know that's also needed because people are looking for that prescriptive direction and, uh, as well at, at times. So that's helped. So it's both ways. Energizing our you know it's the bottom up and top down approach that's really worked well for us. And then the other thing is, um, don't think too much. Uh, get started. <laughs> You know, and, uh, you know, it's okay to fail fast. Try things out, and you will not know until you actually try things out. Uh, and there's a lot to learn, uh, and we've, you know, not, um, like I mentioned, McKesson has been on this cloud journey for a while, uh, but uh, it will take some time. So, so st start, think less, start, uh, but then uh, go slow in terms of, you know, you have to really pace it out in terms of, you know what you want to achieve, so I think that's that's at least what what I see has been working for us. That, yeah, thanks. Uh, I, I'll tell you, it's 
one of the things for me is, you know, we are 30 second provisioning globally for any SAP system. It's all per second billing all the way up to our entire fleet. So unlike a classic SDP project where, you know, you start thinking about it this year, you kind of size it out, you get sticker shock, you put it in the budget, you'll maybe do it next year. You can do this t this afternoon on a credit card, right? And it's that, that, that adjusting to the removement of the restrictions is kind of hard, right? I, I think right back to the start of the conversation, it's, it's not about the technology, it's about the process. And once you understand what's possible, you can go from there. Hey, thank you for your time, for spending the time with us uh, this afternoon. Timo, Mina, sincerely appreciate you giving this insight and wisdom and spending the time with us. Really appreciate it. Um, like I said, you, you can go this afternoon and start an SAP server in 30 seconds. That's never been done before at scale. Um, there's no reason not to give it a go. In the meantime, I will tell you that the next organizers would dearly appreciate if you would provide feedback on the session so we know what you liked and what you didn't like and, and what we should do next year. But uh, at our rate of growth in SEP, I think there'll be a few more of these to come in the next uh, as we go forward. So uh, thanks for your time. And my last call to action I have to say is if you're interested at all, why wait? Um, yesterday, Andy Zitney, we had a conversation with Andy Zitney, and Andy's, when I asked Andy a similar question, his answer was, tell me exactly what your plan B is. Right, because if plan A is wait and see if anything, if I need to do this, at some point you're going to have to change, right? And so if it is this simple and it is this possible, why are we all waiting, right? Competitive advantage is on your side if you do it. And if you want to do that, call me. We'll, we'll more than happily come out and visit you. But thank you all. Um, Mina, Timo, thank you one more time.